This is the second lecture in the first semester Java course presented by Savage River Research. To view all of the currently available lectures, point your browser to savageriverresearch.com and click on Open Courses. This lecture assumes that you have completed Lecture 1 and that you've been successful in downloading and installing both Eclipse and the JDK on your machine. And this is where we're going in Lecture 2. But before we start, do you have all three of these icons on your screen? If you've done all the downloads, but don't have the Eclipse icon, just put your browser over the Windows icon in the lower left of your screen. The Start pop-up will appear. Then click on the left mouse button, and this screen should pop up. Move your cursor to about here, and the slider bar should pop up. To press the left mouse button and drag the slider down, until you reach the Eclipse folder. If there's no Eclipse folder, you haven't installed Eclipse. You need to go back to Lecture 1 and work your way through that setup. Left-click on the Eclipse folder, and you should get this drop-down, which is the icon for Eclipse. Move your cursor to the Eclipse icon, and right-click, and you'll get this drop-down. Move the cursor to Pin to Start, and left-click on Pin to Start, which should place a copy of the Eclipse icon in Start. Move your cursor to the newly created icon, and to press the left mouse key, and drag the copy of the Eclipse icon onto your screen. Repeat this sequence to find the Windows System folder. Open the Windows System folder and right-click on File Explorer. Just as you did with Eclipse, move the cursor to the pin to start and left-click. A File Explorer icon will appear in the Start panel. Left-click on it and drag it onto your screen. Now, repeat the sequence to find Notepad in the Windows Accessories folder. And you should have all three of these icons on your screen. Now, we'll be using all three quite often. Do you remember this slide from Lecture 1, slide 44? You created a workspace, which was nothing more than a directory labeled Java underscore 1, and you launched Eclipse instructing it to use that directory to store files associated with the programs you intended to create. Then you got this welcome screen, and you hid that, which gave you the home screen for the Eclipse Integrated Development Environment, the Eclipse IDE. Then you minimized Eclipse by clicking the small bar in the upper right corner, which reduced Eclipse to this icon down at the base of your screen. So if that's what you did, and if you didn't shut down your machine after Lecture 1, you can bring Eclipse back up by double-clicking that icon. On the other hand, if you actually shut down Eclipse at the end of the first lecture, then there's no icon on the bar. So just double-click on the Eclipse icon you placed on the screen. It'll always be there from now on. And the Eclipse starting screen will appear, 
followed by the Eclipse IDE launcher, which will display the last directory you worked in. Now, of course, you can change to another directory by clicking on Browse, which would bring up this Select Workspace Directory screen. But if you already have the correct directory, cancel this and go back to the launcher. Now, one last comment on the launcher. Do not check this box, because if you do, Eclipse will always open to the directory shown, in this case, Java underscore one, without offering any way to get back to this select the directory as workspace screen. The only way to get this screen to start showing again is to wander through the Eclipse system settings until you find a way to reverse your check. So, on the Windows box, if you minimized Eclipse and left the machine running, you can click on the minimized Eclipse icon here at the bottom of the screen, and you're back where you were at the end of Lecture 1.1. If you didn't minimize at the end of Lecture 1, there will be no minimization icon, so just restart Eclipse and work your way through the launch sequence. Either way, this is where you should be now, on the primary Eclipse screen. I'm outlining it in blue for easy reference, but your screen won't show up that way. If you bring up File Explorer, which I've outlined in red for the same reason, and navigate to your workspace folder, folder java underscore one, you'll see this folder, dot metadata. Eclipse created this to store any configuration data that would be generated in any settings changes you might make for this workspace, like the one we just looked at, the one I asked you not to change. If we had made that change, the setting change would be stored here. Now, go back to Eclipse and left click on File, and you'll get this drop down. Then move your cursor down to New and slide it right to the second drop down. Slide the cursor to Java Project and left click and you'll get the Create a Java Project screen. Type Week 1-1. Leave all other settings as they are. Now left click on finish and you'll get the create module dash info pop-up. You don't want to create a module info. It's useful in large projects, large complex projects, but for the work we're going to be doing in the first semester Java course, it's just unnecessary and it can cause problems. So left click on don't create but if you're anything like me, when I'm trying to follow a lecture over YouTube on a new topic like this, I could easily click the wrong button. And if I do that, I'll get this screen, which shows that I created a module-info.java file. And to fix that, I'll right-click on the file to get this drop-down and then I'll left click on delete and Eclipse will display uh, a delete confirmation screen. And if I click on OK, uh, the module.info file is gone. Now, in either case, we now have the Eclipse Java project folder. And if I click on this small right pointing arrowhead, 
the subfolders created by Eclipse will also be displayed. To see all of them, go back to File Explorer and look for your Java underscore one folder. This is the physical location of the week 1.1 Java project folder you just created. Its purpose is to hold the set of associated Java files created to address some problem domain. Now click on the week 1.1 folder in Windows File Explorer. Click on it to open it. When you created week 1.1, Eclipse created these files and folders in that project. And at this point, both of these folders, bin and src, are empty. You can confirm that if you wish. Now minimize File Explorer. Don't close it yet. Just minimize it. We'll need it again in a few minutes. And left click on File. Then traverse the drop downs to click File New Class, and you'll get the Create New Java Class screen. The package box on that screen should remain blank. We'll discuss packages in a later class, but they're not necessary for what we're doing now. And like module info.java, they have the potential to cause unnecessary complications. Type program 1.1 for the class name and click Finish. Eclipse creates a bare bones class shell for the class program 1.1 and displays it here in the editor. Now, go back to File Explorer and in the week 1.1 project folder, open the SRC folder. Note that the physical file for program 1.1 is in SRC. SRC is shorthand for source, as in source code. And it's a subfolder of project week 1.1, and there will be a source folder in every project we create in this course. If you double click on program 1.1, it should open in Notepad. If it doesn't, right click on program 1.1 to get this sequence of screens, then select Notepad. This is the physical file created by the Eclipse editor. When you make changes in, to this file in the editor, then save your work. The changes will be saved to this file. Now, close Notepad, then click on the bin folder, which shows that the bin folder now create, now contains rather, contains a single file program underscore one underscore one dot class. Right click on that file, which produces this drop down menu. Then left click on open with, which produces this pop up. Now I've taken you through this alternate route to opening a file with Notepad, because the first time you try to double click on a file with an extension Windows hasn't encountered before, like the dot class extension, Windows won't know how to open it, won't know what software to use to read the file's contents. Now, after you've used this pop-up for a dot Java file and a dot class file, Windows should remember your choices and open with Notepad for either one of those file extensions. So, select Notepad, then click OK. And you should get something that looks like this. 
a text file full of incoherent babble. So, what are we to make of it? Well, this graphic diagram provides a high-level view of the stages required to produce a Java program. Eclipse provides the text editor, this text editor, that will allow you to create plain text files like Program 1.1, and Eclipse can then run that file through the Java compiler that you downloaded from Oracle when you downloaded the JDK, the Java Development Kit. We can run this file by left-clicking on this white dart that's enclosed in the green circle. Here, let me blow up a view of that. This runs the compiler, and when the compiler runs, it produces the program 11.class file that we just looked at. It is this .class file that is run by the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment. You also got that from Oracle when you downloaded the JDK. There is a Java Virtual Machine for every major combination of operating system and CPU chip running on the internet. The .class files that we'll create in this course can be run on any of those machines. So now, the trick we need to master over the rest of this course is how do we write the .java files that can be compiled into .class files that can be run on the wide variety of operating system CPU combinations found across the internet. So, let's plunge into the problem and start looking at Java syntax that will allow us to write these .java files. A .java file is a Java source code file that contains one or more Java classes. Now, for the next couple of lectures, we'll just be writing one Java class as one program. That's what we're going to do with program 1.1. So, here's the shell that Eclipse created way back here when we clicked File New Java Project which produced this new Java class window where we named the class Program 1.1 and Eclipse produced this shell. Well, that's all well and good, but it doesn't do anything. And what we want to do is write programs that actually perform some useful task. Okay, let's start small. Let's add some code, maybe something like this. Now, if your organization is sponsoring you for the Savage River Advanced Classes, they are planning to spend a considerable sum of money to enroll you. In fact, they've already dropped the bundle to reserve your spot. And those advanced classes will be incomprehensible unless you master the material in Java 1 and Java 2. So when these programming problems are presented, work through them. Make sure you have an error-free running program that accomplishes the assigned task. Now, Savage River also makes basic Java lectures available to everyone over YouTube. The two basic sets, Java 1 and Java 2, cover at least the material presented in a two-semester sequence at a good university. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you're not enrolled for the advanced courses but hope to learn Java for free, courtesy of the folks at Savage River, you have to do the assignments 
and write and test the code. This one's a piece of cake, but they'll grow increasingly difficult. And if you're just phoning it in, the assignments will be incomprehensible just a few lectures down the road. Okay, that's my fair warning. So back to the code. It's easy to make a typo. Perhaps forget to put this semicolon in. If that happened, I'd get a white X and a red circle indicating an error. The bad news is that your code must be error-free before you can compile it. But the good news is that Eclipse is constantly watching for just such syntactic errors, and it identifies the line that contains the error with this error icon. Furthermore, if I actually move my cursor to the error icon, the cursor turns into a pointing finger, indicating a live link. And Eclipse posts a message box describing the error. In this case, a syntax error, which can be fixed if I insert a semicolon. A semicolon is required to terminate any executable statement. Let me blow that up so you can read it. Now, suppose I fix that, but then delete the second underscore from the class name. I'll get an error icon on that line. And if I move my cursor to the icon, Eclipse will tell me what's wrong. And again, I've blown that message up so you can read it. The public type program one must be defined in its own file. Now, let's recap some of what we looked at in this lecture. A Java source code file contains one or more Java classes. If more than one class is in the source code file, only one of those may be public. And again, that's all we'll be working with for a while. The public class and the file name of the source code for that class must match. We just saw that. A class name program underscore one underscore one must be in a file named program underscore one underscore one dot Java. Each Java class can be roughly separated into parts. And here are the three major ones. This is a Java comment. It's ignored by the compiler. In the editor, comments show up in green. You and I put comments in a program to remember how the program works. Comments have very little use in the code we'll write for the first few programs. But as the problem domains get more complex, the code we write will get more complex. In the real world, where they pay you to resolve mind-bendingly difficult problems, the code you write will run into the hundreds of thousands of lines, sometimes over a million lines. It's almost always the work of large teams. If you fail to document what you're doing, no one else will be able to figure it out. And if you're temporarily detailed to another project and, and away from your own code for a few months, when you return, you won't be able to figure it out either. Not until you step back through it, time and again, documenting what you should have documented the first time. As the programming assignments in this course get more difficult, we'll use comments to rough out the skeletal structure of your solution and expand those comments as the solution begins to take form in your mind. If you're being sponsored by your employer for the advanced course, advanced courses in networking and cryptography, 
And you'll need to retain some of the work done in Java 1, and particularly Java 2, as a starting point for those problem domains. Now, this is the class header for Program 1.1. The terms public and class are reserved words. They can only be used in a manner explicitly required by the syntax of the Java language. In the Eclipse Editor, reserve words always show up in dark red. This is the body of Class Program 1.1. All of the data and methods for this class will be between these curly braces. And between those braces is where the main method goes. This is the method header for the main method. The main method is where a Java application begins. This is where the body of the main method goes. All of the actions to be completed by the program will begin between these curly braces. Note that in writing the header for the main routine, I introduced two additional reserve words, static and void. This is the Java statement that is executed when the program runs. To create this program that simply outputs the text string output test, I had to create a project, in this case, weak underscore one underscore one, then within that project, create a Java program, in this case, program underscore one underscore one, which automatically creates the basic shell for a class of that same name and places it in the editor. The basic shell has no errors, but it does nothing. If you want your program to do something, you have to write a main method. To run this program, click on the white dart inside the green circle, and if you have any unsaved changes in your program, Eclipse will notify you. Click OK, and for program underscore one, underscore one, this is the output. And that output was generated by this statement. Let me blow this up. Now, obviously, I owe you a detailed explanation for this statement. Where does it come from? How does it work? That will come in time. But right now, all you have to remember is that we can output any text string by typing that string between a set of double quotes enclosed by a set of parentheses at the end of system.out.println. Everything else in program 1.1 is just the basic structural framework for any Java program. You have to have it. Eclipse won't understand your code if you don't write it according to the rules of Java syntax. Now, what happens if I forget to write void right here? Try it. Remove it. See what happens. The program won't compile. Look where the red arrow points. You get a red dot with a white X inside it. They're in the left margin of the edit window. If you put your cursor on that error dot, the cursor changes to the pointing finger, indicating a live link. Eclipse will try to identify the problem. In this case, it's easy. The return type for the method is missing. Here, let me blow that up. The return type for the main method is always void, and it has to be there. So write void back into the file. Now, there are a substantial number of ways to get any program wrong, and my advice is try out a few where you know what the error is 
and look at the eclipse diagnostic. At this point, most of the errors you make will be simple and easily diagnosed. But as time goes by, the problem domains will grow more complex and the errors more subtle. So take a minute. Pause this recording. Try these deletes. See what happens. Go ahead. Pause. There's only one line in this program that ends with a semicolon. System.out.println output test. This is because it is the only Java executable statement in the program. The rest of the code will be either a comment or other Java framework code. There are other Java code elements that do not need semicolons, including class headers. Class headers are terminated by the set of curly braces that enclose the body of the class. But in addition to a class header, there are method headers, which are also terminated by their own set of curly braces. In general, curly braces are part of the framework code that needs no semicolon termination. Java is a case-sensitive language. String and system require a capital S, just as shown. And all Java programs must be stored in a file with a .java file extension. The Java compiler will not read any file that does not have a .java extension. Comments, which are preceded by two dashes, two slashes rather, always show up in green, and they're ignored by the compiler. As I said, generally they're notes documenting design decisions in the code or explaining the underlying algorithms found in complex domains. A single .java file may contain many classes, and we'll see that later on. But a single .java file may only have one public class. If a .java file has a public class, the class must have the same name as the file. All Java applications must have a main method. An application is something that runs on the computer. If you have 2,000 lines of perfect code and no main method, you won't get an error icon, but it won't run. For every left, play, every left brace or opening brace, there must be a corresponding right brace or closing brace. Here there are two matching braces an opening brace and a closing brace for the class header. And here there are two matching braces, an opening brace and a closing brace for the main method header. It is only executable statements that are terminated with semicolons. Comments, class headers, method headers, braces are not executable Java statements. They are structures. They have to be there. They have to be there according to the rules of Java. Now, one more observation about this executable line. Over the next few lectures, we'll use it as the primary way to display output to the console. And as you will see in the next lecture, formatting that output will grow increasingly complex. Okay, that's it for lecture two. In the next lecture, lecture three, we'll cover variables and literals and primitive data types.